Welcome to this Ableton Live 10 tutorial. So today we are going to make a drum pattern. Uh, so it's not too complicated to get started off here in Ableton. At the moment we're looking at the session view. Um, and the first thing we need is we need to pick a drum kit. So um, we can come over here to drums uh, inside Ableton's browser window. And we can see that Ableton comes with a bunch of drum kits already. Uh, now, you might not have exactly what I've got here, but you'll definitely have the 909, the 808, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to use this Chromatone kit. I've already auditioned it, but if you want to uh, listen to these before you actually pull them into your project, you can click on them, and that'll audition the sound. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to grab this guy, and I can click and hold, and I can drag and drop it onto this MIDI channel. Now, drum kits uh, will only work on MIDI channels. Um, so, if you drag it and you pull it onto an audio channel, it'll convert it over into a MIDI. Um, that's just the way that Ableton works. So, I'm going to click this channel, I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to click the last channel. So, I'm going to select those three, and I'm going to delete them. So, I just want this drum kit channel. And if I want to be nice and organized, I can click on that channel, I can hold Control R um, to rename, and then I can call it drums and then press enter and it puts that name in there for me so what you can see here is uh, it's dropped in this drum kit so I've got all of these pads here and if I press the play button I can audition what's in there all right so um, that's all very well but I want to sequence a drum beat um, so there's a bunch of things that I need to consider and do before I can start sequencing the first thing is how fast do I want my drum beat to be so I'm going to write something at 140 beats per minute. Uh, so I've typed that in there. So I've just clicked my BPM and I've written in the number that I would like. Um, and now I need to create a MIDI clip. And a MIDI clip is required so that I can draw my drum sequence inside of it. So if I double click on any one of these blank slots here, it creates a MIDI clip. So uh, you can see that uh, that's been populated and now this view down here has changed. And if I move my cursor um, so that it changes into these uh, two arrows, I can actually click and drag so I can, uh, I can see everything in this piano roll. So if I click on this little headphone button and then start tapping on these, uh, the piano keys, uh, it'll let me audition the sound. So if I have that turned on and I click them, it, it won't let me do anything. So that lets me audition. Um, and you can see I'm looking at something like uh, that looks like a grid. So what this is, uh, is it's one bar of music. Okay. And we can see that uh, by looking down here, uh, we, so this is going to loop constantly around. And it starts at position one and it goes for a length of one bar. Okay. Um, so we're looking at one beat, two beat, three beat, four beat. Okay, so one, 1 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. So there are four beats inside this one bar of music. And then if we right click and we look at the fixed grid, these lines here are representing the 16th notes. Okay, so if I were to just double click somewhere randomly along here, it will place a note and it will be exactly a 16th note long, okay? Um, so you just double click with your left mouse button to place notes. Uh, you click on them and press delete or double click to get rid of them. If you want to move them, you can left click and hold and then drag sideways or you can go up and down or diagonally. You can do it however you like and... As you can hear, that gets a little bit chaotic when I've got that turned on. So if you don't want that to happen every time you're moving stuff around, just, just turn it off here. Um, and if I wanted to draw bigger notes or smaller notes, I can grab it at the end, pull it longer. I can also grab it from the beginning, pull it longer, shorten it. Uh, but you'll notice that I can only go as short as what my grid is set to. So I can turn it off. I can make it a smaller division. I can do um, a whole bunch, like a whole bunch of things with the the grid in here. But sixteenth notes are great for typical drum patterns. Cool. So let's go ahead and start sequencing uh, a drum beat. So I'm gonna click and drag, and that lets me select multiple notes, and I can just hit delete to get rid of them. Okay. 
So, uh, the first beat of the bar is the downbeat, and there should always be something that holds the downbeat, usually. Um, so we're going to put a kick to take the place there. So I'm going to double click. Uh, and that kick will play at the beginning of every bar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press play here. Uh, I could also press spacebar on my keyboard. Um, and spacebar will start playing. And if I hit spacebar again, it will also stop it. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. Cool. So you can hear that that kick is being triggered. You can see the white line indicating where Ableton is currently playing. And that's just going to keep going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a drum pattern that's reminiscent of something that you would find in dubstep. So I'm going to go kick, snare, kick, snare. And then maybe as we get a little bit more complicated, I'll put in some variations. But for now, we're going to place our snare. So we've got the kick holding the downbeat. We're not putting anything on the uh, the offbeat, uh, and then we're going to put a kick here on the next downbeat. Sorry, uh, I meant a snare. Cool. All right, so we've got a very, very basic dubstep um, pattern rolling. So what we'll do is we'll add in some hi-hats. So we've got this closed hat and this open hat, and they're really stabby. Um, and kind of interesting, so let's go. Cool, and if I want to put one here. Cool, and I like that, but I don't like the way it rings out. So I can actually use uh, another short stabbing um, closed hat to actually kind of step on it. See, notice how it stops the tail of that open hat playing out. So, I like that. I'm going to go ahead. Okay, cool. I'm going to let that one ring out. Okay, so that's my pattern. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and stop it so we don't go crazy listening to it on repeat. So it's quite basic, and we're, we're going to talk about ways that we can make that more interesting, okay? So first things first is we can change the velocity of the individual drum hits. So what that means is we can change how hard the virtual drummer is hitting the instrument, right? So imagine this hi-hat. If we audition it, Instead of hitting it at that sort of velocity, we can gently tap it if we like. So I can click on that drum hit that I would like to change the velocity of. And you'll notice when I'm mousing over it, you can see that uh, there's this little kind of orangey red sort of thing that's changed to a darker color than all of the other ones. So that's indicating the velocity sensitivity for this drum hit. And you can see that there's one that relates to all of these drum hits. Cool. So if I grab that and I pull that down, it makes it quieter. Okay. So now if I play the drum pattern, cool. So you'll notice that there's a bit of a different feel. I'll bring that up just a little bit. I'm going to also bring this one down. Okay. And I'm going to bring this open hat down a bit as well. Might bring this one down. Cool. But I'm going to make the kick and I'm going to make the snare really loud. Cool. All right. So that's one way that we can start to humanize our pattern. So we're making it sound uh, a little bit less robotic. Another way that we can do things is we can click and hold on one of our hits and we can press Alt inside of Ableton 10, and we're able to s move this without it snapping to the grid. So I can place it anywhere. So what I might do is I might make this hit just a little bit before the exact position of the 1, 3. So I'm just sneaking it ahead a little bit. I might grab this hat, click and hold, hold down Alt, and I can maybe slide that guy back a little bit. So that's going to just give it a little bit more of a variation in a human feel. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. 
So I could grab the snare and I could pull it back and I can make it quite sloppy. Cool. And uh, I could have that constantly changing throughout my pattern as well. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll make our pattern a little bit longer because this just playing over and over again, it's a little bit repetitive. And there is um, sort of an interesting uh, pattern that you can recognize when you, uh, when you start observing other people's music. So I'm going to describe to you a, a pretty simple rule for creating drum patterns. So let's go ahead and say we're going to make this a four bar loop. So I can come over to the length here and I can say, all right, well, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got one musical bar two musical bars, three musical bars, and four musical bars. So all together, that's four bars of music, okay? So something that we would like to explore is making some variation. So we can say, all right, from one to two is pattern A. From two to three, we're going to make pattern B. From three to four, we're going to take pattern A and we're going to paste it here exactly as it is. So let's do that right now. We can click and drag just like this. So I'm just clicking right next right next to the two, but still in this in this half, uh, this part. Click all the way down to drag and select everything. And you'll notice that this little bar is indicating that I've selected everything in that area. I'm going to go Control C to copy it. And then I can place my cursor where I would like to paste it from. So I want to paste it from the start of the third bar. And I can go Control V. Cool. So now I've got an exact copy of that pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the kick, Control C. And I'm going to put it there. Uh, and I'm going to take the snare, Control C. And I'm going to place it there. But I'm going to move it slightly. So maybe this time I'll move it a little bit forward because that one's a little bit back. And that's going to create some movement in the in the rhythm and then maybe we'll put a kick here and a kick here but this kick will decrease the velocity so and maybe this one a little bit as well cool and maybe we like those hats so i'm going to select that area and i'll copy that over but maybe we'll miss a hit there we'll just see how it sounds i'm not sure whether it's going to be interesting to listen to because I'm just doing it by look but let's have a play so I'm just gonna play this and then we'll worry about the last pattern cool alright that's sounding good so we've got pattern A pattern B pattern A and then for the last one we're gonna make pattern C okay and pattern C is gonna be an even bigger variation than the first one that we made here right so let's take the kick the kicks fine and let's think okay so we've got kick maybe we'll go kick kick snare so we'll go kick kick snare and then we'll grab uh, the the second half of that pattern and we'll paste it here so that's our kicks let's grab the snare uh, maybe we'll grab this one uh, and we'll position it kind of where we like Let's pull it, um, click and pull it back a little bit. And remember, I'm, I'm clicking, holding and pressing Alt to move it without the grid snap. Um, so let's, let's play this through. Uh, I ju I'm just going to listen to this for now. Cool, that's working really nicely. Let's get some hats in there. So uh, let's have an offbeat hat there and an offbeat hat there. And... Mm, let's chuck in that open hat there and if we just want to play this last part of the pattern I can actually press the see when I put my cursor up here it turns into a little speaker that's me that means if I click there it's gonna play from there so that's sounding pretty cool let's go um, put another hat there put a open hat there and maybe we'll finish it off with a oh, no. let's have a listen see how it goes It's interesting. Let's have a listen again. Let's have a listen. I'm just... Let's have a listen. 
Okay, so this guy, let's make him really quiet. This guy, let's make him really quiet. Um, and unfortunately, I've actually copied all these over with maximum velocity, which is a little silly of me. Um, I'm just going to change the the kick velocities. And you'll notice as, as I manipulate the velocity, it kind of makes things feel almost like they're sort of stumbling or... Okay, cool. Um, let's have a listen. Okay, let's just say that that's, that's what we're after. So... Uh, I click to the beginning and let's listen to that loop a couple times around and we'll just see how it's sounding. Okay, well, maybe I would rework this a little bit more, but the basic principle is there and we're not trying to get it perfect just for this example. So, go ahead and play around with this. If you want to make the loop even bigger, you can click on the length here and you can drag it out even further, but... Um, that's up to you to play around with, but this is the basic principle. So pattern A, pattern B, pattern A, and then pattern C. Listen to drum and bass, listen to dubstep, listen to hip hop, listen to all of the broken beat um, genres, and you'll notice that this pattern occurs constantly in that music. And it works really well because it keeps your ears like, oh, what's happening now? There's a lot of variation, there's a lot of progression in the music. So, I hope that was useful for your first video. I mean, so, so for your first drum beat. Might be your first video too. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. You can uh, find my music pages uh, in the links in the comment description below. You can jump on our Discord server. I've got the link for that down below. And I just want to alert you guys about um, Steemit, DTube, and DSound. So if you guys are into cryptocurrency, I've got links for all of that down in the video description. I've got profiles on there, so jump on and follow me. And uh, these platforms look really promising and look like they're really going to change things for content producers. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.